In this video, I'm gonna break down some of my favorite shots from a couple football games I filmed recently and share with you all the tips and techniques that I use to get these shots so that you can use them for yourself and become a better sports videographer. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography and I, I'm i gonna be breaking down a bunch of my shots here from a couple of recent games that I filmed for the Canadian Football League. So all footage that I use in this video is credit to them. I filmed it for them. I did this recently-ish on the channel and the response seemed to be pretty good. I think people were interested. So I figured I'd do another one. And again, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, drop it in the comments, but I'm gonna try to be as thorough as possible as I go through these shots. All the footage that you're seeing here is colored with my football video LED pack, which are the color grading presets that I use to color all of my footage for field sports like football or soccer. So if you like the way this stuff looks and you wanna get your football or soccer footage looking like my footage, then you can go check that out at my website, www.peterstrellis.com or at the link in the description. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the first shot. So this first shot, was filmed on the FX3 with the Tamron 35 to 150 millimeter f2 to 2.8 at f2.8 with the Tiffin variable ND filter on the front. My ISO was 800. I filmed this in 4K 120 frames per second and my shutter speed was 1 over 400. So this shot is actually like a two point conversion. So this is after a touchdown and the blue team here, Toronto, is going for two. So just off the top, I ideally would like to be focused on the quarterback here and I'm, I'm shooting this in autofocus. I shoot pretty much everything in autofocus for football and my autofocus is picking up on the O-line, which is fine. But in this situation, I feel like I really should have switched to manual focus, focused on the quarterback, held focus and switched back. So that I still have autofocus tracking the ball through the air, which you'll see is important later. But then I would have actually had this quarterback in focus to start the shot. A little bit annoying that I didn't, but not the end of the world as we see the rest of the shot play out. So we're going and right about, does he ever get in focus? I don't think we ever get the quarterback in focus in this shot, which is unfortunate, but I'm showing it to you and I love this shot because I positioned myself at the back of the end zone expecting this quarterback to either run towards me or throw because I just felt like a lot of plays were kind of coming this way. They just scored a touchdown coming to this side of the end zone and I felt like they were going to go back that way. So then here the quarterback throws the ball and I don't totally know where this is going, but I know it's going to be a bit of a difficult one because I'm like not in the corner of the end zone. I'm to the left side, but kind of in the middle. And this is like going into the corner of the end zone, which means I'm going to have to pan across my body which is kind of a difficult motion of the camera when you're already on one knee to turn your entire body all the way across. So as this ball is coming across me, I just zoom out all the way to 35 mil just to make sure I can keep it in the frame. You can see the ball gets ahead of me a little. And because I'm zoomed out, I'm able to keep it in the frame. And then I make the turn and this receiver absolutely lays out to get this ball. And because I'm zoomed out, even though I didn't turn as fast as the ball came across my body. I was wide enough that I still got the shot. I have the receiver here. You can see his foot down, you can see the ball, you can see his whole body. And then as I pan down, you see him hit the ground. And we get the catch. This part is interesting because I can choose to either stay here, like in my position and film whatever he's gonna do, or I can try to get over to him and get in front of him to get a, a better shot. And I ended up choosing, as you can see here, to run and go after him. And then these guys went up for a jump and I put it in slow motion and like, I get it, like it's usable, but there's a bit of shaky cam happening right here before the shot. And if I admittedly, if I knew that these guys were gonna turn around and run at each other and jump, I would have just like stayed put and got the shot. But the reason I decided to go was one, if you look at the 360 camera footage here, you can't see it in the actual video from the camera, but the referee runs from behind me, basically right in front of where my angle would be. The players are over here. And then here's the referee who just ran from behind me over to here and here's me. So I'm afraid that this referee is gonna block my shot and I'm not gonna get any angle of this at all. So I feel like I have to move. And then on top of that, 
Last year at this exact game, there was a shot where a receiver made a catch and ran to the corner like this. And then their celebration, same team, was all the other receivers coming around him and posing for a camera. And I thought that they were gonna do the same celebration here. So I wanted to get around for it. And I thought I had ample time to get there. And I kind of recognized I had to get there because of the ref. So I started making my move and obviously I should have just stayed. But I'm fortunate that I still managed to get this jump. And that although I would have liked to frame that a little differently, I got it and it's definitely usable. Definitely some things in that shot that I could have improved or done differently, but realistically, I still captured it and it was a really good play. And by guessing what was gonna happen, being in the right place at the right time, I managed to get a really good shot that basically nobody else got. Cause you can kind of see from the 360 camera footage, no one else is really around me here. Like there's the broadcast camera guy who's coming running all the way from the goal line here to get this celebration. But for if you're not on broadcast and you can't run on the field, then this is as, about as good as it gets. So I'm pretty happy with this one. Although I can take it as a bit of a learning experience and there's a couple of things I'd rather do differently, I still think that this is a pretty good shot to show off. This next shot is from the same game, but of the other team and is filmed on the Sony FX3 with the Sony 100 to 400 millimeter f4.5 to 5.6 lens. It's shot at f5.6 at ISO 800 in 4K 120 frames per second with a shutter speed of 1 over 250. So the first thing I want to address before we even get into this clip is the shutter speed because I say often on this channel that I like filming sports videos at faster shutter speeds than usual and break the 180 degree shutter rule. But here I'm actually filming at 180 degrees. And that's because ISO 3200, which is the other dual base ISO on the FX3 was just a little bit too bright for the scenario. I did not have the variable ND filter on because that was making my shot a little bit too dark with the lens being f5.6. And I wanted to shoot at a base ISO to prioritize dynamic range and make sure that my shutter was first and foremost before getting a specific effect, exposing my footage properly. And this was the best way to expose the footage. So this is how I did it. But in an ideal world, I would have liked to shoot this with a bit of a faster shutter, though honestly, Unless you have like a super, super trained eye, I don't think you can pick it out. And even then it's not a big deal. So this is shot on a monopod, which is important. As we see that here, I actually do have the quarterback in focus. And because of the monopod, I'm able to get a really smooth motion following this ball right into the receiver's hands. And I'm able to like move my camera very well laterally to keep him in the frame and keep enough room below him and above him. You can see that he stays like in the middle basically with room below and room above the entire time. I'm not cutting his feet off or his head off, which is really good for me. And then I'm fortunate that he just turns up field and starts running basically at my camera. It makes it a much more dynamic shot than if he were to run side to side, because now he's kind of separating himself from the background even more as he runs close to me. And then here you can see that he's really separated from the background as he's getting tackled. Thanks to him running up the field. And even here, you can see that there's a lot of out of focus elements in the background. The players are well behind him and he's very crisp and sharp in the foreground, kind of throughout this shot. And then our receiver gets tackled. And instead of cutting right here, which you could easily do because you just got the shot and you feel good about it and the play's done. I hold and I get him sticking the ball out to indicate first down and dropping it. I think this one was a really good camera work. He was framed really well. The benefits of having a monopod in this situation were very clear. And I oftentimes do like filming handheld and I will use the 100 to 400 handheld as well. And I think there's benefits to that because you can get more dynamic movements, but in a shot where someone's kind of coming at you and you're just slowly tracking, like the monopod is perfect. And this was a perfect example of when I would want to use a monopod. Now the third shot I want to go over is actually pre-game entrances for Toronto from this game. So this shot, like the first shot that we watched is filmed with the Sony FX3 and the Tamron 35 to 150 millimeter F2 to 2.8 with a variable ND filter at F2.8. It's filmed at ISO 800 in 4K 120 frames per second with a shutter speed of one over 400. 
what I'm trying to do here, and I'll show you my, my the 360 camera first. I don't actually have the 360 camera footage, but I have a photo to show you what the situation looked like, is all the players are over here about to run out this way. And then the team mascot is here with a flag. And I see this as an opportunity to kind of use this flag as a foreground element. And there's another angle, you can see that there's like all the players all lined up back here about to run towards this big crowd in the field. So my plan for this shot is film the key players at the front, which are the starting running back and the starting quarterback, using the flag as a foreground element to possibly do some masking. And then as all the players are running out, come back to here and shoot out at all of them running out into the big crowd and get the audience back there. So let's just watch this. You see we have the starting running back there and then I go to the starting quarterback. And we're just getting ISO shots and focusing on keeping the flag in front of him. So we have him perfectly in focus. And then a second there where the flag is going in front of him. And after I get that shot, I try to get the same shot with the running back, but he's not really giving me that intense look of focus that I'm looking for. In this area, I'm just trying to capture like really intense looking moments. Guys looking locked in, maybe jumping around, getting pumped, clapping their hands, things of that nature. So I kind of got a short shot of each player. The starting quarterback shot, I would say was good and usable. And now I'm trying to just like wait. I had to do a lot of waiting. They actually sat here for like four minutes before running out, which was a little annoying and I was rolling for a long time, but I was waiting to get like that right shot. And here I just get my body a little bit lower and then I'm able to get under the flag, get him in focus. And I've still got the flag there in the foreground. And this is the type of stuff that I'm looking for. Like this jumping in 120 frames per second is a really good scene setting shot. And there's a lot of standing around, a lot of standing around. They eventually run out. But those two shots that didn't seem like much, just the one shot of the quarterback intensely looking forward with the flag going in front of him and then the jumping shot translated into this. And that quick sequence is a really good way to introduce that player if you're telling the story of the game, to set the scene for this team in a pre-game video. Really anything that has to do with this game, telling the story of it or telling the story of this player throughout the season, these are really good scene setting shots. So although the raw footage didn't look like much, shooting with intention was really important for getting the shots that I needed to get this part of the video that I was producing finished. And I think it worked really well. And this even as like a, a short little social media clip, this is something that a team or a league could post. And I think it'd be pretty cool. So this last shot I wanna talk about is actually filmed from a game a couple weeks later. So I just filmed this like last weekend and it's between Toronto again, who was in the last clip and this time Ottawa. I filmed with the Sony FX30 with the Sony 70 to 200 millimeter F4 at f4 i'm at iso 2500 filming in 4k 60 frames per second with a 1 over 320 shutter i would have loved to film this in 120 frames per second but this is actually a kick return touchdown so we're going to watch it first and talk about it and then we'll get into why i am not filming in 120 frames per second so here i just got my camera locked on the returner he goes to get the ball at this point, he's not super in focus. The focus is more on this front line of players here rather than the very back, but also this player is 100 yards away from me, so I'm not super stressed about it. And then as he breaks through the crowd here, the ref kind of comes in and picks up focus, which I wasn't expecting, or else I would have half pressed the shutter to hold focus on this player. But as he runs through the gap here, now he's off to the races. And from this point forward, he's just beating up the punter. So he's perfectly in focus for me. I've decided at the start of this play, because this player has been really hot recently and has had a couple of good kick returns, that this guy has the potential to break one loose. So I see them doing a big punt, all the game officials, all the other photographers, anyone like involved with the game who needs to keep up with it is way at the other end of the field, waiting for the Toronto's drive to start in their own end. And I'm camping out in the end zone waiting for this player to return the kick for a touchdown which is like a bit of a 
risky thing to do, I guess. Like, not really. I guess if I don't stay in the end zone and I go to where the play is going to start in the other end, then there's not really a big shot that I'm missing because I'm just filming a 10 yard kick return, which is not something you're probably going to use. But now I'm in a perfect position to capture this 80 or 90 yard kick return for a touchdown. So the player gets around the corner, he beats the punter. And out of nowhere comes this player who basically catches him. And this is why I wish I had this in 120 frames per second. I always film stuff in the red zone or when there's about to be a scoring play in 120 frames per second. But for this kick return, I had it in 60 frames per second and I forgot to change it because it didn't like cross my mind as like, oh, this is a scoring play. Like, no, it's a special teams play. But here comes this player taking out the returner as he dives for the pylon and hits it with the ball and scores. I would love to put that in 120 frames per second, but even just having it in 60 frames per second is still pretty effective. And I think that shot looks pretty good. Now I have a similar situation to that very first clip where I can choose to get up and follow the player or stay in my position and film whatever he does. And because of the setup that I'm using here, I have the Sony FX Fairview with the 70 to 200, so I'm on a crop sensor camera. Picking that rig up is not going to be very good if I'm trying to like run and gun with it while walking around handheld. Plus, I don't have like a monopod or anything here. I literally am just filming handheld with this setup. And there's nobody else around me. Like the closest person is this ref here. There's no photographers or videographers in this end. There's no one who's going to get in my way at this point. So I figure I'm just going to stay pat and film whatever happens, even though the player is walking away from me here. This is kind of nice. He walks over and gives the football to an older fan and gives him a high five. I capture a couple of high fives and simple stuff like that. And then I'm really happy that I decided to stay because I get this fun shot of the guy who just scored the touchdown dancing in the middle of all the cheerleaders before running back to the bench. So that's a super fun celebration in my opinion. Definitely going to be using that one. And I'm happy I didn't go all shaky cam with it. I just stayed put and got my shot, which is kind of a lesson. Sometimes you don't need to be running after the play. You can just stay put and capture what's around you and make it look really good. And I think I did a good job of that here. Kind of learned my lesson from that previous shot. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found me breaking down these videos helpful. If you did, please subscribe to the channel because I post videography and video editing tips, tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis. And I'd love to have you around for that. Again, this stuff is all colored with my football video LED pack. So if you like the way these clips look, go check it out. Link in the description. Would appreciate that very much. If you have any questions, drop them down there. I would love to get back to you and just have a conversation. And yeah, I think that's all I got for this one. So until next time, peace.